Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In today's video I finally want to explain how this missile defense system here works. So you might remember this missile defense system here. I made a video about it a few months ago. But I never really got around to making an explanation video. This is because I lost the world that I built this missile defense system in. But today I found the world back so I can finally make this video. Anyway. The missile defense system shoots missiles, or in this case just small engines, out of the air, like you might expect with TNT, as you can see right here. It doesn't also work with one type of engine, it also works with faster engines, like for example this 3.3 blocks per second engine. So the missile defense system consists out of three parts. You have the detectors here, these are those giant strips of blocks. Then you have some redstone that determines the speed of the flying machine. And finally the TNT system that accurately shoots at the flying machines. In a moment I will explain more information about the missile defense system as well explaining the three parts in more detail. But first I want to look at this little contraption. This contraption here is a game mode detector. So this repeater here will be turned on whenever I am in game mode creative, survival or adventure. But it will turn off whenever I switch to game mode spectator. So believe it or not, this machine here is actually closely related to the missile defense system. And towards the end of the video I will explain how exactly this works. Anyway, let's continue with some general information about the missile defense system and how to use it. So this missile defense system here will work with all missiles, so missiles of all speeds, except for missiles that have variable speeds or missiles that fly diagonal. After a missile uh, is taken out by the system, you can see that it leaves this strip of repeaters that is turned off. This strip will now no longer work. So in order to have a missile that flies exactly over the strip being taken out, you have to reset the missile defense system which uh, you do by pressing this button here. Another cool thing about the system is that you can entirely surround it in blocks that cannot be blown up. So anvils above the detectors, water or obsidian above the defense system and obsidian to the sides. This means that no TNT from the outside can damage the defense system. So you can also use it to blow TNT jumpers out of the air. Alright, now let's take a close look at the defense system. I used a Y-bit to detect the flying machine. Before I explain what the Y-bit is, I first want to credit Goose as a channel. I didn't design these myself, Goose designed them and you can check out his video in the description. So the Y-bit basically does the same as a daylight sensor. It detects uh, light updates in the column of blocks with this redstone block. And when it detects the light update, it will retract the redstone block. To reset the wire bit you just give it some light again and take it away. And now you can give another light update inside this column. So now you might be wondering, well if it does the same as a daylight sensor, why not use a daylight sensor? And the reason for this is fairly simple. A daylight sensor only updates every 20 game ticks. This means that if you give it an update really fast, it might not detect it. And obviously, if you have fast flying machines, a daylight sensor is simply not guaranteed to detect this flying machine. A Wybit, however, will always detect the update, no matter how fast it is. And this makes it a lot uh, better to use in the system here. So now let's take a closer look at the Wybit itself. You can see it's basically a daylight sensor, but with a leaf block above. Before uh, I can explain why there is a leaf block in the Wybit, we first have to look at magma blocks. So you all might know the property that if you expose a magma block to light and then you take the light away, the magma block will be emitting light. However, Mojang didn't just implement this mechanic to uh, magma blocks, but accidentally also to blocks like leaves. However, this is obviously not intended, so if you give a light update anywhere in the column with the leaf block, the leaf will realize that it should not be emitting light and therefore turn off. This is what you can detect with a daylight sensor. So all you have to do to make a Y-bit is give a leaf block some light, block the light again, and then give an update anywhere in this column 
so the leaf will turn off and this is what you can detect with the daylight sensor. In the missile defense system I use two giant rows of Y bits and they are alternating like this so each slice of the missile defense system can have their own detector. Now let's talk about how these detectors are used to determine the speed of the flying machine. If you look carefully at the missile defense system you might notice that the distance between the Y bits is the same as the distance between this Y bit and the TNT system. This has an important reason. Since these distances are the same, the time that it takes to travel from the first detector to the second detector is the same as the time that it takes to travel from the second detector to the TNT system. This also means that if you somehow record this time and then from here wait the same amount of time, the flying machine should be exactly on top of the TNT system, no matter the speed of the flying machine. This is also what happens with the redstone. The flying machine hits the first detector. Then after some time, items will start flowing from this hopper into the second hopper. Then the flying machine will continue flying and at some point hit the second detector. At this point, the item flow is reversed and all the items flow back. Obviously, the time that it takes for the items to flow from this hopper to this hopper is the same time as it takes for the items to flow back. So items flow in the first hopper corresponds to the red area and then the items flowing back corresponds to the orange area. This means that when the hopper is empty, the flying machine should be exactly on top of the TNT system. So the only uh, thing left to do is to get a TNT to the flying machine in time. However, here you might see a little problem, because it actually takes roughly 5 seconds for the TNT to get to the flying machine, because of the ignition or fuse time of the TNT. To counteract this, I have some delay in this red part here. This delay here adds up to about 5 seconds. So instead of recording this time to fly from one detector to the second detector, you actually record the time minus 5 seconds. Obviously, if you take 5 seconds from this side, you also have to take 5 seconds from this side. So now if you activate the TNT system whenever this hopper here is empty, the flying machine still takes 5 seconds to travel on top of the TNT system. So you can perfectly shoot it out of the air. So let's see it in action one time. So hopefully it becomes a little clearer. So as I said, the flying machine flies over the first detector. This turns off all the repeaters. Right now, an item flow starts from this hopper into the other hopper. Then when the flying machine hits the second detector, this item flow is reversed. Now, when all the items are back, we will activate the TNT system. So, because we want to activate the TNT 5 seconds before the flying machine is exactly on top of the TNT system, there also is about 5 seconds of delay right here. And this is how you can accurately hit the flying machine. Alright, so now we know how to detect the flying machines and how to measure the speed. Now let's talk about the TNT system. So the TNT system itself might be the simplest part of this entire machine. We use 4 TNT to propel 1 TNT upwards and we just put the TNT on top of a trapdoor with some delay here. Like you can see here. Actually, the TNT is shot so fast that the travel time from the TNT to the flying machine does not really need to uh, be taken into account. So this was everything about uh, the missile defense system. Now let's take a look at the game mode detector. So you might recognize a Y bit inside this game mode detector. And this is also why the game mode detector is related to the missile defense system. So when I was working on the missile defense system, I noticed that it had random failures. And these failures had to do with me being in game mode spectator. So I did a little debugging and I found that a Y bit will only work when it is loaded by a player that is in creative mode. And it will stop working when the player switches to spectator and start working again after the player switches to creative. It especially gets weird when you look at what goes wrong. If I look in here, you can see the leaf definitely turned off. It's light level zero. This means that 
this daylight sensor should not be emitting power, even though it is. So you might think, well, maybe uh, daylight sensors do not work when uh, they are loaded by a player and spectator. However, this is not the case. As you can see in creative, this works, but when I quickly switch to spectator, the daylight sensor also still emits power. So obviously this daylight sensor is now the other way around, but I made sure to do a lot of testing and daylight sensors definitely work when the player is a spectator. So somehow the daylight sensor stops working whenever a leaf gets involved. I do not understand why this happens, but it still allows to make this cool machine. Then I want to end the video with some more information on the Ybats. I played around with Ybats for a long time and I noticed some other random failures. One of them has to do with having a light source up close. The Ybat for example breaks if I place a redstone lamp right here as an output. It doesn't only break with redstone lamps, also other light sources will break the Ybat. I don't exactly get the reason why this happens, but uh, the Ybats in general are just a little bit buggy. For example, they might also break if you have too many solid blocks here at the top. Um, so if you have Ybats, make sure to um, use them in an area where you try to use as many transparent blocks as possible. Anyway, this was all the information that I had to tell for this video. I hope that it is clear how the missile defense system as well as the game mode detector work. And if you have any questions, you can always ask them to me in the comments. Anyway, see you in the next video.